Hey guys, it's Clem from Clem's Recipe Reviews, and today I have a very special guest with me. I have my mother-in-law, Janet, with me. Uh, she is going to show us how to make her famous fruit mince pies. Um, now, fruit mince pies are a British Christmas tradition, and Jan is actually from the UK, and she moved here how long ago? When you were, what, 14? 15? 15 years ago? Yeah? Okay. And so she brought this, um, this recipe with her. Um, it's a family recipe. You think that your 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 mom made it and her yes. mom made it as yes. well. Yes. So it's probably been in the family for quite a long time, right? At least two or three generations. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, so why fruit mince pies? Do you just do you just like doing them, and it's a good thing to give to friends and family, or because they're easy and they're tasty, and yeah. and it's my Christmas. That's, that's your my, Christmas my thing. Christmas <laughs> mince pies. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's your first memory of fruit mince pies? Oh, probably when I was eight or nine years old. Yeah. Um, and my mum had a shop, and it was a general grocery store in England, and the neighbour, or the, all the customers used to come in and order their mince pies, and a local baker used to make the mince pies, and the bakery burned down two days before Christmas. Oh, that must have been fun. <laughs> so, Mum had all these orders, and two days before Christmas, she stood, stayed up all night and baked mince pies so her customers had mince pies for Christmas. That is so, outstanding yeah. customer service there, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Old England. <Yeah. laughs> well, I'm sure the customers really enjoyed it and everything, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. Um, so, what are some ingredients that you insist that people use in their fruit mince pie? Like, um, you, you've got here fruit mints, but yes. what, why, why is it this particular one? Well, both the Robertson's fruit mints and the lard are things that my mum used to put in her pastry. Mm -hmm. The pastry was always made with lard. Um, I don't know whether it was this, this particular brand of mm -hmm. lard, but it was always lard. So I've always used lard in my pastry. Yeah. So why, why do you use it? Is it does what? it taste better or is it? I think the pastry is a better consistency than using butter. Okay, all right. And then, yes, yeah, so you said Robertson Fruit Mints. Yes, um, which is an yeah. English brand. The Queen endorses Robertson's jams. Oh, okay. Um, so you can find this at most grocery stores. I think it's probably the only one that I've seen in the supermarket as well. You can make your own, but that takes a really long time. And really, what's the point of doing that if you can get it? you know, conveniently made and it actually tastes really good. Um, yeah, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to show you the steps on how to make the Conduit Family Recipe of Fruit Mince Pie. Cool. Okay, so Jan's actually um, oiled up some patty pie pans. Is that what they're called? Yep, yep, yep. So they just look like this, pretty much. Um, yeah, there we go. Just like that. Uh, she's got quite a few, and quite a few of them are very old as well. So, if you, you know, that's the whole thing of if you take care of your utensils and your tools, they're going to last you a lifetime. So first step is that, and then turning on the oven at what temperature do you have your oven at? Around 200. So that's 200 degrees Celsius. Um, I'll put in the show notes how much that is in Fahrenheit as well as on my blog. So okay. first step is what? So you just want me to do this how I would normally yep, do it? Yep, pretty much. So that's plain flour. I'd say that's oh, a cup and a half, two cups. Yeah, and then there's also self-raising flour going in there as well. So that's probably about a cup, I would say. Okay, so I, I yep. think I use about one and a half yep. and about three quarters. Okay, so that sort of balance. So is that just because you don't want the, the pies when... I don't want them raising up. Yeah, you don't want them yep. raising up too much. Yep. yep, and then that's caster sugar. Yep. And you've got what, like maybe half a cup in there, yep. not even. Yep. So, Janet has made this so long, she doesn't actually have this written down. And this has actually never been really written down, has it? No. Okay. And now she's putting everything in the food processor, and then she's going to go ahead and mince it up. Yep. 
Yep, and then adding the lard. Now, how much lard do you have there? So that's three quarters of a 250 gram block. Okay. That be right now. So it's, I don't know. So, yeah, three quarters yep. of 250 gram blocks. And you just cut it up into chunks. You just cut it into chunks. Yep. And you have that cold as well. Very cold. It's yep. cold. Yeah, straight out of the fridge. Okay. Yeah, so don't leave your lard on the counter sitting around. Oh. Yep. So why do you use a food processor over a mixer? Um, because at Yeah. Use a mixer for okay. I'll tell you now. I use my mixer <laughs> instead of my food processor. Yeah. Well, but this is not the steel blade. It's only the plastic blade, which. Okay. So that's only a. Uh, uh, only the plastic blade. So you don't you don't want to chop it up. You want to just cut finely through yes. it. And the lard's so soft yes. as it is that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, this is what it actually looks like when um, it's ready for, is it ice water you put in there? Yes, right? So yeah, so you've got these good chunks in here. It's already starting to stick, and I'm really sorry if I'm oh, touching okay. it. That's okay. um, you've got, it's already starting to stick, as you can see, which that already, I can tell now that I'm not doing the Foodman's Pies correctly at home. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and then just adding a little bit of ice water. Now you don't add a measured amount of ice water, do you? of the pastry. Yep. So is it until it forms a dough? Yes. Okay. Uh, not, a, not too wet. Not too wet, okay. So still a crumbly dough. Um, it binds together. It's got to bind together. Okay. You can see. You can see it starting to come yep. together. So wrong. Why? Because my, my dough is not like that at all. Is once I get it out onto the um. What's it like? It's it's more crumbly. No wonder Dan keeps saying he's like it's just a bit too short. Maybe it actually isn't just a bit too short. Okay. So yeah. So it's formed up a nice like little ball sort of thing. Yeah. And yeah, it's actually yeah. You know, it's gonna grab some of it. Um. Yeah, it actually is, well, you can't really see it from here, but it's actually pretty wet and not too sticky though, which no. is good. Yeah. And if it is sticky, what, what yeah. do you do? You just add in a bit more flour and that's about it? Yeah, I use the board for that. Okay. So this will dry, this is more flour that will dry it out. Yep. Oh, and we're also having a cheeky wine as we're making these. <laughs> yes. And you can tell if it's too wet because at that point it would stick to the board. Right, okay. How many dozens of these do you think you make a year? Um, I've made 12 dozen this year, this so far. Jeez. And normally in a batch I'll make probably 10 or 12 dozen. In and a I'll, batch? In a batch. Wow, I, so I managed to get four last week. I can Four do dozen. Twelve dozen in two hours. Yeah, it took me two hours to make four dozen. <laughs> I'm still a bit of a novice. Yeah. Okay, so hang on. So how thick is that? That's 
Well, the better I have. Just looking yep. at that. Yep. Okay. All right. And so then you do it pretty much until you see the lines on the. Yeah. See, there's a bit thicker, but I won't use that. Yep. Okay. So yeah. All right. So that's probably I'd say about a quarter of an inch thick. Not even that much. Yep. You can give them to me, and I'll put them in. I've got to help you out. You're helping me out oh, with this okay. video as it is. Okay, so you don't do two at a time? Yep. Okay, we just press them in. Yes. Is that all right with the breaks in there? No, well? I wouldn't have no? a break. Because no. no. the, the fruit mints will, will seep out. Yep. yep. So just throw that back in the mix. And we'll do it the next, the next time. Um, only because that amount of pastry yep. should make enough for two dozen plus lids. Yeah. Okay. And that's too bigger. Yep. You when know, you're bored. And each batch is a little bit different as well, isn't it? Yeah. Just slightly. And you you end up doing it by feel essentially. Yes. So Jane's actually using, she's using these little cookie cutters here. Um, I'd say that's probably about it's four inches. Just a little bit so, bigger. And they're perfect size. Just like, yeah. Yeah, because then when you press them in, they end up being the perfect size for the patty pan. So, yeah, so they end up coming out like that. No, I get the one. Hmm? I get lazy. What do you mean you get lazy? Well, when I go to brush these. Yep. I oh, will just brush the whole back of a piece of pastry. It's not my deal. But shh, we won't tell anyone. Except for a YouTube. <laughs> okay, sweet. And then... Okay, so again, uh, Robertson's Fruit Mix. And how much are you putting in there? Into each one? Is it half? What, that's probably a teaspoon, isn't it? This is a large teaspoon, so it's probably a yeah, small teaspoon. Yeah. Okay. Um, bear in mind, when it gets hot, it will overflow. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you put too much in, if you overfill them. That is another thing with this fruit mince. It is the only fruit mince on the market that actually contains suet. And what's suet? Suet is a fat, an animal fat. Oh, really? Yes, and it's actually in the fruit mints. It's okay. grated. You can see it. The little white bits. Yep. I thought they were apple. Must be the finest grated suit. All right. Okay. What I found with just fruit mints is, yeah, it spreads pretty well when you put it in and it heats up. Um, but I guess maybe that is the suet actually that's doing that. I was wondering what it was. Yeah. So obviously, if you're a vegetarian, sorry, you really shouldn't be making um, these. Well, check the check my heart. It used to contain suet. Yeah. Hmm. Sometimes it says suitable for vegetarians. But am I am I doing enough in each one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. to the tops that go on top of the fruit mince pie. Okay, so this is where... Yep. Oh, this is your little trick that you do. With the water? Yeah. yeah. As I said, I get a bit lazy. That's all right. So this is... 
Yep, so you just you paint the water on top of basically to make the edges of the pastry stick together. Yep. But you don't want it really wet. Yep. So you don't want it soaking wet, but you want it moist enough that it'll yeah. stick. Easy, huh? Yeah. Well, once you get the hang of it, it is pretty easy. And again, these are about an eighth of an inch thick, so the same thickness as what you would do for the pie base. But the smaller one. Yeah, but it's also the smaller cookie cutter. So that one I'd say is probably about two inches. But it fits perfectly on the top of the pie. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look like it has suet anymore. Okay. Yeah, it says sugar, apples, vine, fruit, okay. citrus peel, there's vegetable oil in it, rice flour, there's dill and fennel in here, which is a bit odd. Oh, because of the, the spice of the fennel. Mm. So what's this part here? Uh, allow the uh, fruit to get hot and steam mm -hmm. without making the pastry soggy. So you just vent it. Okay. What happens if you don't poke them? Does it just kind of like pop up and then... Oh, imagine the fruit would get too hot under there. I don't know. It would yep. steam the pastry. It'd probably make it a bit soggy. Okay. Yep, and now it's just an egg wash. So you just yep. use an egg and a little bit of milk. Yep. You, know, you can use egg and water if you want. You know, whatever your egg wash is. And that's just to get them a little bit brown. Correct? Yep. Okay. Give them a bit of color. Alrighty, these ones are ready to go. And into the oven. And again, that's a 200 degrees Celsius oven. And for how long will they be in there? 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so I guess we'll see in 15 to 20 minutes um, how these pies are going. All right, fruit mince pies are out of the oven. So you can see they've got a nice golden color to them. Actually, those are a lot browner than I make them. I'm doing this whole process so wrong. And I thought I had it down to like a T pretty much. But so anyway, so while those were baking, we actually made, well, Jan made a second batch. And she's got a third batch going as well. <laughs> so it's like a whole almost machine going on, a fruit mince pie machine that's going on today. And this is pretty much what you do, right? When you, you make, you don't make a dozen, you make five, six dozen at a time. Ten to twelve. Ten to twelve, okay. I really have to get my game on. Alright, so we've got quite a few out and there's the last step to do is actually just get them out of the pan. Which is what Jan's doing. And then you actually sprinkle them with icing sugar. Now, do you let them cool completely? Um. Not always. Okay. Don't do it while they're really hot. Mm -hmm. But these are okay. Okay. These have been out for long enough, I think. Yeah. So in the last couple of hours, we've been 
making these for about two and a half hours we've made one two three four five six seven eight and then there's another two in the oven so we've made ten dozen did i count that correctly four eight yep, yep. Oh, no, two so ten dozen fruit mince pies and that's with three batches of dough Oh, I think. Yeah? Okay. So that's with four batches of dough. Okay. And I have to say, these smell really, really good. I do it the same way, except I've got a bigger sieve thingy. Yep, so just a little sieve and then sprinkle them. So you really douse them with it, with the icing sugar. It's not just a light sprinkling. My, yeah, I tend to put a fair bit on. Mm. That's all right. It's Christmas time. It's silly yeah. season. Yeah. Should be dousing everything with sugar at this point. Okay. Cool. And that's it. <laughs> so I'll put the recipe up on my blog um, and also put all the conversions and stuff for people that use Fahrenheit or, or Celsius, you know, imperial or metric measurements. But there you have it. That's the Condulet family fruit mince pie recipe. See ya. Bye. <laughs>